Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we are going to uh, start chapter number 21 of ACCP6 uh, taxation, uh, which is on the trusts. Now, normally we put this chapter under the section of inheritance tax because we haven't moved to our next chapter, which is on corporation tax. We haven't moved to our corporation tax yet, so we will uh, say that we are still at inheritance tax. Although the things which we will study in this chapter are not are not directly relevant to inheritance tax, uh, so basically, you know, the trusts and uh, stamp duty land tax, so they are not directly re related to the inheritance tax, uh, but we normally put it under the section of inheritance tax. All right. I will quickly uh, share the screen with you so that we can uh, read our notes. Uh, it is just a small chapter and uh, interesting chapter as well, I would say. Right, so as you can see on your screen, uh, it's ch ch chapter number 21 and the page number 76 of your lecture notes. Now it says trust. Now what, uh, what, what the theory behind it is that when you transfer an asset to a trust, uh, it will remain with the trust for some period of time until the beneficiaries of, of age so that then the trust can transfer it to the uh, to the beneficiary so then they then the asset will will go out of the trust to, uh, will go out of the trust to the beneficiary right so as long as it remains within the trusts there are some charges on that now there are a couple of charges one is known as principal charge another one is known as exit charge <coughs> excuse me now principal charge is uh, principal charge applies as long as the uh, as as long as the asset is within the trust, whereas the exit charge will apply when the asset is leaving the trust. So when the asset leaves the trust and it go to the beneficiary, exit charge will apply. So exit charge simply means that it will exit the trust. So it, uh, there will be exit charge on that. Now there are two different type, uh, type of charges. One is principal charge, another one is exit charge. Now when will we apply these charges? The principal charge will be applied on the f first 10th anniversary, uh, so it will be on the 10th anniversary. Uh, uh, so if the asset is within the trust for 10 years and after 10th anniversary, uh, you, uh, you will have to charge the principal charge. Right? Now how much is it? Uh, it is basically 6%, which is the 30% of the day uh, of the lifetime tax. So you know what the rate of lifetime tax is in the inheritance tax. A lifetime tax in the inheritance tax was a uh, it was 20%, uh, half of death rate, it was 20%, uh, whereas the principal charge is 30% of the lifetime rate. So 30% of 20% is basically 6%, so that was, that's what we say it is uh, at the rate of 6%. Right, so that is uh, mm, you know principal charge. Likewise, exit charge is uh, also exactly in the same way. Uh, it is at the rate of 6% as well. Now, exit charge will depend on when, uh, when the asset is leaving. So if the asset is leaving after the 10th anniversary, it will be different. If it is leaving before the uh, 10th anniversary, uh, then you know, it will be different. Now if the asset is, leaving, if, uh, asset is leaving the trust before the 10th anniversary, then we know that there won't be any principal charge anyway, because principal charge will be applied on the 10th, 10th anniversary. So if the asset is leaving before the principal charge, before the 10th anniversary, then there will be exit charge, and exit charge is exactly the same way, 6% of that, 6% uh, of the value. Now say for example, if uh, asset is leaving after the 10th anniversary, now we know that if asset is leaving after the 10th anniversary, then there will have been a principal charge applied on that on the 10th anniversary. So principal charge is already applied on that, uh, and exit charge will also apply. Now, because it, is, it has been more than you know, 10 years, so every quarter in excess of 10 years, uh, we will take the proportion of that, and, that, and by that amount, uh, you know, exit charge will be reduced. Exact, uh, exit charge rate is exactly the same, 6%, but it will be reduced by a specific uh, proportion. Uh, so the more time it has been after 10th anniversary, uh, the more, you know, more uh, relief you will get uh, so that, that's how it works. I will read the notes together, then you will understand this concept better. Another thing is that this calculation bits and pieces, examiner won't examine these calculations in, in the exam. Uh, however, examiner wants you to know what the exit charge is, what the principal charge is, how does it work, but he won't examine any calculation on that. Right, so first of all it says uh, inheritance tax charge on a discretionary trust. 
The property is in the trust is known as relevant property, and so long as it remains relevant property, it is subject to principal charge on the every 10th anniversary from the start of the trust. If a relevant property leaves the trust, there is an exit charge. Now, how much is principal charge? IHT is charged. It says changed. It's not changed. It's charged. IHT is charged on the value of the property uh, in the trust at each 10th anniversary of the trust. Uh, IHT principal charge rate is 6%, which is 30% of the lifetime rate of 20% uh, of the value of the property in the trust at the 10th anniversary. Likewise, exit charge before first principal charge. Now, when I say before first principal charge, it means that there are, uh, the asset hasn't been uh, within the trust for 10 years. So if the uh, relevant property leaves the trust before the 10th anniversary, then there will be exit charge, which will be the six, at the rate of 6%, which is 30% of the lifetime rate of uh, the uh, lifetime rate of 20% uh, of the value of the property at the time relevant pro property leaves the trust. And what would happen if exit charge is applied after the principal charge, which means that it has been with 10 years, it has been more than 10 years uh, since the asset has been within the trust, so now asset is leaving. Now say for example if, at it, uh, if asset is leaving after 12 years, so how many quarters are there in excess of 10 years? There are 8 quarters, aren't they? Because there are 4 quarters in a year, so mm, the, uh, the years in excess of 10 years are 2 years, and in every year there are 2 quarters, so we will measure it in the quarters. We will measure it in the quarters, so uh, we'll see that how many quarters are there in excess of 10 years. So say for example, if it has been two, uh, two years in excess of 10 years, so we'll say eight quarters. Right, so if a property leaves the trust after principal charge, then IHT charged, uh, charge is 6% and 30% uh, of the lifetime rate of 20% uh, of the value of the uh, property reduced by a fraction. Now this is the fraction by which we will reduce the uh, exit charge. And this fraction is that X over 40, now 40 is, you know, quarter, and uh, uh, x is also a quarter. So say for example if it has been 8 quarters, so 8 over 40. Now this uh, 40 represents 10 years as well, right? So it, if it has been 10 years after the first, first principal, first exit charge, now there will be another principal charge, charge after 10 years anyway, right? Because principal charge will be applied on every 10th anniversary. <coughs> right. So uh, it says that uh, uh, the fraction is x over 40, where x is the number of complete quarters since the last 10th anniversary. And in the, uh, just beneath that it says the examiner won't examine you uh, anything like that, the calculation bits and pieces. After that it says uh, stamp duties, stamp duties on shares and securities. <coughs> now on, on the shares and securities, uh, if it is a physical form, if it is a paper-based, uh, then the tax rate is going to be at the rate of 0.5%, uh, so half percent is the tax rate, and uh, uh, if it is, uh, you know, uh, if it is uh, 27 pounds, say for example, the eventual value is 27 pounds, we will make it to th the nearest 30, so we will round it up to the nearest 5 pounds. So as it says in the notes, transfer of shares through stock transfer form when it says stock transfer form, it means a uh, you know, physical form. So we are dealing physical stuff. We are dealing the transactions on the physical basis. <clears throat> and the duty is rounded up to the nearest five pounds. It is payable by the purchaser. Now say for example, if the um, you know, shares were sold at the value of 5,769 pounds, and how much will be the stamp duty land tax, uh, you know, stamp duty on the shares, uh, so we'll take 5769 into half percent and uh, whatever the value was, uh, value in this case was 28 pounds 85 pence, but we have rounded it up to the 30 pounds, if you want to check on your calculators, we've rounded it up to the 30 pounds because it is a paper-based transaction. Now say for example if it would have been an uh, electronic transaction, we have done it on the computer, and if, it is, if we are doing it on the computer, then we won't round it up to the f nearest five pounds. We will write the exact amount, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and if you look at the second one, it says stamp duty reserve tax. Now, it is exactly the same thing, but we do it electronically in here. And uh, you can just read it yourself. And the amount is going to be, uh, we won't round it up to the nearest five pounds. This is a, a stamp duty land tax. 
Uh, sometimes you have to pay stamp duty on the land as well. So if you buy or sell a land, uh, you'll have to pay, you know, stamp duty land tax. Now stamp duty land tax will depend on uh, if uh, if your land is uh, a residential property or non-residential. So, so the tax rates are different. Uh, stamp duty land tax applied to land transaction. A land transaction is a transfer of land or an interest in land. Uh, stamp duty land tax is generally payable as a percentage of the constitution paid for the land. It is payable by the purchaser and you must pay it within the 30 days of the transaction. And if you don't pay it on time, you'll have to pay interest on that. Now, uh, on next page, page number 77, it gives you tax rates, how to calculate the, um, you know, uh, stamp duty land tax on non-residential property. Then it tells you uh, about the residential property as well on, uh, beneath that. And there is a question given to you. It says that what is the stamp duty land tax on the purchase of a shop valued at £350,000? Now, you will have to t look at the tax rates. Now, these are the tax rates uh, for the different, uh, you know, income, uh, income levels. Now, we will have to calculate the tax in exactly uh, the way we use to calculate income tax, uh, like different bandings. Right, so it says £350,000, so we know uh, first £150,000 at the rate of 0% and uh, another £100,000 is going to be at the rate of uh, 2% and any excess is going to be at the rate of 5%. So altogether, if you see beneath that, I've already provided the answer as well, total is going to be £7,000. So we'll use the banding rules um, on that. Previously, in the previous Finance Act, it was uh, different than that. However, in this finance act, uh, they have uh, made a little change to this rule. The next one is a residential property. Now, the residential property rates are different than the uh, non-residential one. If you look at that, uh, residential property rates are a little different than the ones which you see on non-residential. And it's, it says uh, another question exactly the same way, £350,000. Uh, how much will be the stamp duty land tax on that? Uh, I hope that you can calculate it in the same way by looking at the uh, by looking at the tax rates. Right, you might have to pay a tax at, the, uh, at a higher rate if you're buying the second property. So you already had one property, now you're buying the second property. So they think that you are a rich person, so you have to pay additional uh, three percent, uh, uh, additional three percent uh, of the tax rate will apply to your property. Now it will only apply if you're buying the second property, you already have one property. Now say for example, if you're selling the old property, uh, so you, you bought the new property, but you're selling the new old property, then they will give you the relief of the old property. So whatever you extra, extra tax paid, that will be deducted out of that. <clears throat> All right, so it only applies if you're buying the uh, second property. However, if it is a company, uh, then even if it is first property, uh, you will still have to pay. Um, you will still have to pay the higher rate. <coughs> right. So as you can see on your, uh, on your notes, additional rate of three percent uh, will apply if an uh, individual buys second property. Uh, it's not replacement of first property. Or if company buys, and then uh, you know additional rate will apply even if it is first property for the company. Uh, if individual disposes of old property within three years of the purchase of new property, then claim could be made to refund additional tax paid. Higher rate does not apply if the consideration is less than forty thousand pounds. So if the consider consideration of the property was less than forty thousand pounds, you won't have to pay higher rate tax because they think it is too less of the property's value. <clears throat> right, after that it says if you gift a piece of land, something like that, uh, or you do it for charitable purposes, then you won't have to pay any uh, stamp duty tax on that. Right, so that is end of our, this lecture, and uh, I will see you in the next lecture, and uh, we will start our corporation tax, which is our uh, last topic, uh, sorry, second last topic in our syllabus. Uh, only value-added tax is left out after that. So we'll see after, um, in, in the next lecture, we'll see corporation tax, right? Thank you very much and goodbye.